Dear students, welcome to my online class. I'm back again with another important topic of basic English grammar. Our today's lesson is on clauses. In my earlier classes, I talked about finite and non-finite verb, and I also explained phrases to you. And a clear conception about finite and non-finite verb, and also about phrases, is very essential to understand clauses. So I hope by this time you have got a clear idea about those topics. So I will straightly go to our today's topic of discussion, that is clauses. To start my discussion, we have to face a basic question. What is a clause? You can see the title of today's discussion, clause. Then what is a clause or how to define a clause? Actually, a clause is a group of words, just like a phrase. A phrase is also a group of words. But what differs a clause from a phrase is that a clause must have a subject verb combination. We don't find a, neither a subject nor a verb in the case of a phrase. But to have a subject verb combination is mandatory in the case of a clause. And a clause uh, actually is a part of a larger sentence, having a subject and a finite verb. Sometimes a clause can be used independently, just like a sentence. But when that sentence becomes a part of a larger sentence, it becomes a clause. So to highlight the main points, main aspects of a clause, we get the following things. Here you can see aspects of a clause. Firstly, it's a group of words, part of a larger sentence, having a subject verb combination, sometimes can make a complete sense. These are the main aspects of a clause. Just look at some examples here. We have three examples here. First of all, I know the man. Here we have a subject and a verb. I know. So it's a clause. In the same way, the second example, we have who came here. Here, who is subject, came is a finite verb. And in the third one, Look at the third sentence very cautiously. Here, the first sentence and second sentence is united together. I know the man who came here. If we analyze this sentence, we will find two sections. First of all, I know the man and then who came here. Each part has its own subject and one verb. That is why we have two clauses here. So, dear students, uh, you can understand what a clause is. Now, I will show you different types of clauses. Just in a graph, look at the graph. Basically, clauses are of three types independent clause. Sometimes we call it a principal clause or main clause, whatever you say. Number two, dependent clause, or it is also called subordinating clause. And thirdly, coordinating clause. Primarily, we have these three types of clauses. And now I will discuss what is an independent clause. We also call it a principal clause or main clause. An independent clause is a part of a sentence having a subject and a finite verb of its own. It depends on none to make a complete sense. When used alone, it becomes a sentence. The independent clause is also known as principal clause or main clause that I have already mentioned. So, 
an independent clause must have a subject verb combination it can make a complete sense and it can be used independently just look at the example here he gave me a pen which was expensive in this sentence the section written in bold letter and underlined he gave me a pen if this part is taken out from this sentence it can be used as an independent sentence it can make a full sense but as it is a part of a larger sentence here we will call it a clause just read these lines he gave me a pen is an independent clause because this group of words has a subject and a predicate it can produce a complete sense by itself he gave me a pen this can be used as an independent sentence as it can produce a complete sense by its own it can also be treated as a sentence if used alone so dear students uh, what is an independent clause actually an independent clause is that part of a sentence which can make a complete sense obviously it has its own subject and own verb so so we can see an independent can uh, an independent clause can stand alone now uh, we shall move to dependent clause in other words we call it um, subordinating clause also dependent clause as the name suggests it is dependent on something that means a dependent clause cannot make a full sense by itself to complete the sense it has to depend on something just read these lines like an independent clause a dependent clause has also its own subject verb combination but a dependent clause cannot stand alone to make a complete sense it depends on the independent clause so a dependent clause or a subordinating clause cannot make sense by itself to make a complete sense it is always dependent on independent clause and that is why actually it is called dependent clause or subordinating clause not principal a dependent clause always begins with a subordinating conjunction such as who whom whose which that when where why how since as because etc all these are called subordinating conjunction and um, these subordinating conjunctions take their place before at the very beginning of a dependent clause now we can see some examples here look at the first example although he is poor he is honest this is a sentence which has two parts first part although he is poor it is underlined and written in bold letters although he is poor at the very beginning of this part we have a subordinating conjunction although although he is poor can it make any meaning can it make a complete sense obviously not to complete the sense we have to pronounce the rest of the sentence he is honest so although he is poor there is an example of dependent clause the second example the book which you gave me is interesting which is an example of subordinating conjunction and which you gave me in this part we have a subject and also a finite verb 
that is gay so which you gave me which you gave me uh, this portion of the sentence can't make a complete sense but it has its own subject it has its own verb and at the very beginning it has a subordinating conjunction so it is a subordinating conjunction uh, clause or a dependent clause dependent clauses can be classified into three categories so here in this slide you can see kinds of dependent clause and what are the types first of all noun clause secondly adverb clause, adjective clause and thirdly adverb clause and now i will explain all these three uh, dependent clauses one by one first of all a noun clause a noun clause actually does the function of a noun a noun clause acts like a noun so what are the actions of noun a noun can be used as the subject of the sentence or as an object to the verb or as a complement to the subject these are the three functions that a noun generally uh, follow it is used as the subject of the sentence or as an object to the verb or as a complement to the subject similarly just like a noun a noun clause can take the position of the subject in a sentence or the object to the verb it can also be used as a complement to the subject so these are the three functions that a noun clause generally does here are some examples look at the example here that he told a lie is true it's a sentence and is here is the tense verb and if i ask you what is the subject of the verb here obviously that he told a lie that he told a lie this part is acting as the subject of the verb is so it's a noun clause now the second example i like what i make the part in bold letters what i make is acting as object to the verb like as it is object so it is an example of a noun clause and thirdly the truth is that i help the beggar the underlined part actually complements the subject the truth this is the three ways how a noun clause can be used in a sentence now we want to adjective clause what is the function of an adjective an adjective always modifies a noun it explains a noun it gives extra information about a noun in the same way an adjective clause also modifies a noun an adjective clause does the function of an adjective that means an adjective clause modifies a noun or a pronoun most adjective clauses begin with a trigger word dear students notice the phrase a trigger word that means the word which um, declares uh, the quality of a clause the an adjective clause begins with a trigger word called a relative pronoun actually adjective clauses are often called relative clauses also we find a trigger word called a relative pronoun and they they are only five in number such as who whom whose that and which these 
five uh, pronouns are called relative pronoun which generally goes before a before an adjective clause sometimes when and where can also be used as trigger word of an adjective clause though basically adjective clauses are preceded by uh, relative pronouns but sometimes we can also find when and where at the very beginning of a of an adjective clause look at the examples i bought a book which is very interesting i bought a book which is very interesting which is very interesting actually describing the book which goes before the clause and it's functioning like an adjective so it's an adjective clause a boy who reads attentively can get good grade the which boy can get good grade who reads attentively who reads attentively it's an example of an adjective clause as it is defining the boy noun as it is defining the noun a boy and in third example i remember the time i remember the time when i was in a village when i was in a village though this part begins with the conjunction when actually this part is defining the noun time so it is also an example of an adjective clause and last of all the fourth example we visited the place where shakespeare was born where shakespeare was born this part of the sentence is giving us extra information about the noun place so it is also a, an example of an adjective clause now come to adverb clause before going to adverb clause just look back to noun clause and adjective clause a noun clause does the function of a noun it acts as the subject of a sentence sometimes it takes the position of object of a verb and sometimes it can function as a complement to the subject and in the case of an adjective clause an adjective clause defines a noun but in the case of an adverb place adverb clause it shows a kind of relationship with the independent clause that means an adverb clause is also a type of dependent clause but this clause basically shows relationship with the independent clause and an adverb clause shows the following kinds of relationship first of all reason and when the relationship of reason is produced through an adverb clause we find the conjunctions since as or because look at the example i don't eat junk food because it is unhealthy because it is unhealthy this part of the sentence is an example of adverb clause which shows reason secondly contrast and to show contrast we generally use the conjunctions though although or whereas as in the following example though he is rich he does not help the poor here the relationship between the dependent clause and the independent clause is something uh, like contrast so though he is rich it is also an example of adverb clause thirdly condition condition is shown 
by the use of the conjunctions if unless or as long as if it rains we won't go out we have another relationship also purpose and it is uh, shown by using the conjunction so that he works hard so that he can prosper in life so that he can prosper in life it actually denotes purpose of action then time time is indicated by the conjunctions like when or while when he woke up it was raining when it was raining when he woke up so it uh, tells us something about time it is also an example of adverb clause and finally comparison by using the conjunctions as or then for example he is not as happy as his brother is there is a comparison between he and his brother uh, it is shown uh, through the adverbial clause as his brother so in these six ways an adverb clause shows the relationship with the independent clause and our third type of clause coordinating clause do you know the meaning of the word coordinating dear students coordinating means equal so the clause which is connected to one or more than one clause of equal importance the clause which is connected to one or more than one clause of equal importance and makes a complete sense by itself coordinating clauses can make complete sense without the help of other is called the independent or coordinating clause the coordinating clauses in a sentence have a equal level of importance coordinating clauses are usually connected with coordinating conjunctions like and but or either or neither nor so or yet etc these conjunctions are also uh, known as coordinating conjunctions and coordinating clauses are uh, uh, coordinating clauses are connected together uh, with the help of coordinating conjunctions just look at the examples here it was 20 years ago and i was living in paris here two clauses it was 20 years ago and then i was living in paris all these two parts are of equal importance and both of them can be used as uh, independent sentence so they are coordinating conjunction we have another example here the albatross brought good luck to the crew but the old sailor shot it one day and both the clauses are of equal importance um, they are equal to each other and they are the examples of coordinating clauses so dear students this is all about my discussion this is all about uh, clauses and uh, i hope you will uh, get a lot of information from my class and if you study clauses from different sources uh, you will be uh, you will have a clear conception about clauses and which will ultimately help you to solve the other pro grammatical problems of english language and uh, soon i will be um, connected with you online uh, very soon uh, hoping for your uh, comments about this online class and uh, till then stay home and be safe thank you